Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video we're going to be making this program of a bouncing ball using object-oriented programming. I made a series on introduction to creative coding and in today's tutorial we're going to focus on the concept of object-oriented programming. I also made another tutorial of the same bouncing ball sketch using procedural programming. So if you want to see how different it is from the object-oriented programming, be sure to check that out. So how we're going to approach this is that first we're going to write a class called ball, and then we're going to create an object ball, and then we're going to have the ball bouncing around on our screen. So first, you can go to the arrow here, and then click create file, and you want to create the file name whatever you want to name it. I'm going to name it ball.js because my class is going to be called ball. Then you click Add File. The first thing before you write a class, you need to go to index.htmi. So this is how you're going to link the JavaScript file that you just created. So this is how the computer will know where to find the ball.js file when it runs the program. So you just come down here and then copy this line here and change the name from sketch to whatever you name it. So in my case, it is ball.js, and that's it. Now, let's go back to the blank JavaScript file. To create a class, so first, you need to write the keyword class, and then the name of the class. And then it has to start with a capital letter for that name, and then a curly bracket. So the first function that we're going to write is a special function called a constructor function. A constructor function is going to be called at the very beginning when you create an object. And the main thing that we're going to put in the constructor function is the data that we want that object to have. So for the object ball, I'm going to give it four pieces of data, which is the x location, the y location, dx and dy, which are the speed and direction of the ball. To create a variable within a constructor function for your object, you need the keyword this dot, and this dot tells the computer that that variable belongs to a specific object that you create. And then you put in the name. So I'm going to put this.x equals to, and then I'm going to put x here because I want to provide arguments for my constructor function x. Same thing for y, this.y equals to y. And then I'm going to put another argument here. In this case, it's a parameter, right? And then for dx and dy, I'm going to give it a constant value of 2 and 3. So now we have a constructor function with four pieces of data, two of which are the x and y parameters that we need to give as arguments when we call the object or when we create the object. And then for the x and dy, we give it a constant speed and direction of 2 and 3. Now let's move on to writing a method. A method is basically just a function within a class. So we want to write three methods. The first one is the method for drawing the circle. The second one is the method for moving the circle. And then the third one is the method for checking the boundaries. The way that you write it is you just write the name of that method, right? So draw circle. Within the draw circle method, you need two functions. The first one is to color the circle, right? So I'm going to color it yellow. And then we want to draw it. So we do an ellipse function. An ellipse function takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the x and y location of the circle. And then the third and the fourth are the width and the height of the circle, right? Within the ellipse function, because we want to give it the position of the circle x and y, we also need to use the word this dot as well. So we're going to put this dot x, this dot y. You really need to not forget this. And then the diameter for the ellipse will be, let's do 30 by 30. The second one is the move circle method. And how do we move the circle? Basically, we just have the x location equals to the x location plus the change in the direction and the speed, right? Same thing for the y side. So now we have draw and move, and then now we want to check boundaries. And within the check boundaries method, we need to write two conditional statements. If this dot x is more than the width, or this dot x is less than zero. So if the x location of the circle is beyond the width of the canvas, or is less than zero, or on the left side of the canvas, right, we want to change the direction. And we can change the direction by multiplying 
the dx by negative 1. So it's going to be this dot dx equals to this dot dx times negative 1. So same thing for the y side. So if this dot y is more than height or this dot y is less than 0. So if it goes beyond the bottom or the top, then this dot dy would have to change direction. So now that we have created the bulk class, let's go back to our main sketch. And this is where we're going to create the object. So first to create an object, you need to create a variable. So I'm going to call it b. And we're not going to initialize anything in the same line here. We're going to initialize in the setup function. How we do that is the name of that object equals to new, and then the name of that class, right? And we need to give it arguments that is required for that specific class. So when we wrote the ball class, we need to give it the x and y location, right? So I'm going to give it at 100 and 100. This line is where we call the constructor function. So if you see this line here, if you go back to the ball class, it's going to set these four pieces of data for that specific object name b, that x and y location, and then the dx and the dy variables. Let's click play. Nothing happens because we basically just created the object called b, but we haven't done anything at all. So before we call the method, I want to show you how we can access the data within the object b. All you have to do is that you need to write the name of that object and then dot, and then the name of that piece of data that you want. So I'm going to print this out. If you notice here, it's very similar to this dot, right? But instead of this, now this piece of data x belongs to the object called b. OK, so if we print this out, you can see that it's at 100. I'm going to change this to 200 so you can see the difference. So if we were to print b dot y and then b dot dx and b dot dy. So now you can see that it's 100, right? 200, which is x and y, and then dx and dy was set in the class already at 2 and 3. And these are basically just initial values, so you can change this throughout the program. So now let's call the three methods. We're going to call the methods within the draw function. So how do we call the methods? It's similar to how you access the data. You basically just put the name of that object and then the name of the function. So we have draw circle. Right? So if we just do draw circle and then we click run, now we have the circle at the location x equals to 100 and y equals to 200. Now we want to move the circle. And now the circle is moved, but then it goes beyond the border. So we want to call the last method called check boundaries. And there you go. So now we have created an object within a class ball called B. And this ball basically is drawn, is moved, and it bounds around the boundaries as we have written within the boundaries method. So now you see how we can create a program where we can create a class ball and an object B, where all the data x, y, dx, dy, as well as the methods draw circle, move circle, and check boundaries are all encapsulated within an object itself. And this will come in a lot more handy when you want to create a lot of objects that are interacting with each other.